person who joins me today on Taking Care of Business is far from normal. We have on Taking Care of Business the Associate Director at Allsop and Allsop, the absolute legend that is Kareem Damu, and also more recently, Dubai's best real estate agent. What's, what's changed the most? Um, the branding and the marketing that we have. So obviously real estate now, heavily there's an influence on obviously social media. So when you're promoting, you've been promoted several times with us in the 10 years. So that was a property consultant. Yeah. And then went to senior. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so I think that was well. <laughs> and then yeah. more recently associate. Yeah. There is a saying, normal gets you nowhere in life. Well, this person who joins me today on Taking Care of Business is far from normal. We have on Taking Care of Business, the Associate Director at Allsop and Allsop, the absolute legend that is Kareem Damu, and also more recently, Dubai's best real estate agent, according to leading property portal, Bayut.com. What an intro that is, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Second time on the podcast. Second time, yeah. I can't remember when it was last year. The fans, have, the, the fans have made requests. They want you back. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was um, the uh, Women's Women's Week, National Women's Week. Was yes, it? International Co- Women's Day, I think. Yes, yeah. so that was a couple of weeks ago. So I asked Kareen to come back onto the podcast because she's been with us for, what, 10 years now? 10 years in, gosh, I think it's August or September, yeah. And that, by the way, anyone watching this podcast, 10 years is like 50 years in any other <laughs> job. It's um, a typical year in Dubai real estate is like three or four in any of the, any of the normal, yeah. normal ones. So do you want to talk to Kareen today a little bit about what's, what her career's been like at Allsop and Allsop and really what it takes to be the best female in all of real estate. So I guess a few questions really for you. Firstly... What did you do back home? So what did you do in real estate before you joined Allsop and Allsop? So um, I went to uni. Then I had one of those moments where I didn't know what to do next. And I always remember as a young child walking past all of like the uh, property, you know, like in the UK, it's obviously all high street properties. Yeah, the window displays. Um, Exactly. And I was like, do you know what? I really like property. So let's just try that. So yeah, I worked for a corporate company in the UK for four years. I started off as negotiator and worked my way up to branch manager. So I had my own branch. Um, And then one day I just sat there and thought, this is not the life that I want. So then I moved to Dubai. So I was in real estate for four years. Okay. From a state agency. So weather's a big big driver for you? Yeah, weather, um, obviously just opportunity in general, lifestyle, yeah. What's some of the biggest differences then? So from from this sort of market here in Dubai to the UK, how how different is it? Obviously weather's a big thing, property prices may be a factor, but what are some of the differences from here, working in this market to working in the UK? So where I worked, it was, like a market town. Okay. So I wasn't like in London or any of the big cities. So for me, um, I just found it, it was very much nine to five. It was very slow paced. Here, obviously it's nonstop. I mean, it is literally 24 um, seven, which is not always a good thing, no. but I do like being busy and just meeting so many different types of people. That's like the biggest thing for me. Um, every single day is different. Whereas in the UK it is the same nine to five same people same yeah. houses like in the uk i worked in like a um like a residential housing estate as such it was a new development but every single house there were like dolls houses whereas yeah. here it's just everything is different uh the houses everything and even more so now with with your where you spend most of your time is lots of people who are investing money in their own houses and you start to see yeah not everything's the same yeah so you start to see a lot of upgrades, a lot of people spending money on on their own properties. That keeps keeps it interesting, also. Yeah, I, guess. I think in the UK people don't do a lot of changes um, unless you go out into like the countryside, for example, and there's nice big houses and people renovate them. But yeah, I think here the properties are completely different. You can drive literally from one area five minutes down the road, and it's completely different. So you joined us ten years ago. Do you remember what it was like when you first started? Remind me, did you go straight into sales or did you start that? Yeah, straight into sales. Um, We were in uh, Golden Diamond Park. Yes. Yeah. What a place. Um, So I started doing apartments. 
So I was doing JLT, Greens and Views, Marina. Yeah. Wow, what an area. <laughs> so back then you could kind of cover a lot of areas and it was fine. Whereas now, obviously, you, it's important to be a specialist just in one community. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, back then I was kind of just dabbling different apartments um, and yeah. You got most of your traction, didn't you, in JLT? So a lot of work was done in JLT. Obviously, it's quite a small team, but you know, it, it, it was very fast paced. If anyone doesn't know Jamira Lake Towers, it's it's very close to Dubai Marina. There's lots of towers, lots of apartments. It's quite a high volume area, so a quick turnaround. Mm. Typically lower fees, also though. Lower fees and dealing with mainly landlords who yeah. have obviously rented out the apartments and a lot of overseas landlords as well. Yeah. Whereas now, obviously working in villas, it's normally homeowners, so it's a completely different type of market. I think that suited you, you know. So when you moved to Dubai, I think being that high volume area, for someone that you know was new to the space, was young, I think high volume areas, low lower value, Everyone, the problem these days is everyone wants to watch you selling Sunset and all yeah. these programs and they want yeah. to sell luxury property immediately. Yeah. But I actually think because you've had your kind of your, how can I put it, apprenticeship in the UK, but also your apprenticeship in selling lots of units and dealing yeah. with lots of different people in Jamira Lake Towers, I think it served you well yeah. now dealing with bigger ticket properties. Yeah. I think obviously I came over with experience, but I didn't know Dubai at all. So it was like on the job training. I was out every single day going to different apartments, learning all the different floor plans, all the different towers. So yeah, I think that that really helped. It just threw me in the deep end. Yeah. Whereas I think if I'd started off in villas or luxury properties, just it's not the same pace. So yeah. I think that really helped. So beginning. what do you say to anyone that's joining a real estate company? It doesn't have to be us in yeah. Dubai and wants to sell all the sexy, expensive stuff straight away. So I think, I, I genuinely think starting off in leasing is always a really good idea as well. So rent, renting think, properties. Yeah, yeah. renting properties because it's very, very fast paced. Like properties get let within, literally within hours. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of on the job training is super important, first of all. Like obviously people do come here and they start off in villas and they, they do well. But I would say realistically you need experience, you need um to be out there kind of learning your product and become an expertise in your product first before then you can kind of look at because again the sale you don't get normally paid straight away so there's a lot of pressure yeah. whereas when you're in leasing and rentals first of all you can kind of build your business so i think that's really important and confidence yeah and what people need to realize is every single so the people that you've dealt with over the years in jamira lake tower so a lot of invest a lot of investors a lot of landlords yeah. in that area let's say even marina where it's reasonably similar these people probably who are, who are landlords probably have very expensive homes. So it kind of leads you into that market inadvertently yeah. anyway at some point. Yeah, and vice versa. So a lot of people I speak to now have apartments. So yeah, normally if you've got a house here in Dubai and you're living in the villa, you'll have other investment properties. Um, so yeah, it did help when I first moved from apartments to villas. I kind of went through my phone book and said, look, I'm moving into a new position. Um, so if anyone has any villas, properties for sale then let me know so yeah that did that did definitely help so what's changed in 10 years being with us obviously the business has grown dramatically but what's, what, yeah. what's what's changed the most um the branding and the marketing that we have so obviously real estate now heavily is there's an influence of obviously social media mm -hmm. so i feel like with all stop and all stop we've really kind of we're at the forefront we've really got like innovative marketing and all the social media the videos the reels everything like that that like years ago you would never i mean you would never even do a video you'd probably just walk around doing some really rubbish photos on your phone not even wide angle yeah so yeah the marketing's massive i think um we're really at the front of that which is great what about culture because when when you came here 10 years ago everyone was together and now I would imagine you probably don't know a lot of people's no names in the company. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked in today and literally I know maybe like five to ten people, which is not great, you know, because it is nice to kind of know who you're working with. Yeah. Um, but our office, obviously in Jamiro Golf States, is very close knit. Yeah. So my colleagues and the people that I do deals with on a daily basis are all around me, which is which is nice. But look, growing as a company, um, we now have everything under one roof, don't we? We have every single different department. So it's hard, you can't keep everyone all together anymore. Also creates lots of opportunities. So yeah. it, 
when the business grows, you could have a mortgage mortgage inquiry. You've got people doing different areas. Exactly. Obviously, we're, we're growing um, the, the focus, so we've, we've started doing different areas, which then creates more opportunity selling into so different areas there. Yeah, no, definitely. So when you're promoted, you've been promoted several times with us in the 10 years. So I started as a property consultant, yeah. then went to senior. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what I think now as well. <laughs> and then yeah. more recently, associate. associate. Yeah. So you really have to go the hard yards to, to, to grow in the business. Do you think as you've grown, as and as, as the role and title change, changes happen, has much change in your job or not really? So when you've had a new um, title, has it, is it, has it made you think differently? Not really. Mm. I mean, for me, it's more like the confidence when I'm presenting myself to a client. So now, obviously, with the associate director title, yeah. it sounds more fancy. Yeah. It adds a bit of weight you know, in terms of my experience, because it's not easy to get that title. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, clients definitely, I think with new clients, it makes a big difference being able to say, look, I'm an associate director of the company. I think it's that's massive. It's mad what, I mean, obviously business cards for me are, are, they are things of old, but it's mad what people, when they see your business card and your title, do um, people talk to you differently? Yeah. So yeah, do people talk to you differently? Do they give you more time? Is it, is it more of, the defense mechanisms are down so they know you know what you're talking about because of what's on your job title yeah so i think a lot of people um especially when they're looking at higher end properties as well mid to high range they want to deal with someone that's an expert in their field someone that's had a lot of experience so obviously having that title kind of supports that it kind of explains to a client that actually i've been here for a long time i've earned you know this position and i've got a good reputation yeah Good few years ago, there weren't lots of females in this industry, and you have stood the test of time. I have. And obviously, thankfully, there are some amazing women that have come into this industry, whether it's with us or, or different companies over the last few years. What's different about you? Um, I think the most important thing is that I just love my job. Okay sounds really cliche but like I think a lot of people like you said earlier come into this job expecting just to earn loads of money it's going to be like selling sunset um I just love my job I love finding people homes I love helping people with their next steps when they're selling and moving um and I honestly genuinely think a lot of people don't love the job they just do it because it's cool or it's exciting to be in real estate in Dubai whereas for me even in the UK, although it was very slow paced, I loved what I did. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm very hardworking. I'm very determined. Like I will not give up. So um, I just sold a house yesterday with a couple of colleagues, and we listed it eight months ago. The house they had before that, I sold in three days, and this house that they gave me to sell took eight months. Wow! And um, it just like I just won't ever give up whether it's selling a property finding someone something sourcing the market um, and again I think people would just look for that kind of easy sale yeah. and a lot of people don't want to do the hard work and like I've got a lot of people around me colleagues my partner like in real estate and yeah like those people are successful because they work extremely hard and they it, it, it is 24 seven, it's not nine to five. Yep. And I think that's what differentiates me from a lot of other people. Were you close to giving up? Because in this job, the first <laughs> nine to 12 months, it's yep. like a pressure, a pressure cooker, you know, yep. it's, it's not just, I need to make money as quickly as I can to be able to survive in a new country, mm -hmm. but also I'm away from family. Yep. I'm in a place that I'm not used to. I'm also starting a new job and learning a new industry. So, so much crammed into a situation. Mm. Were you close to giving up? Yeah, so I remember, God, I think it was like week six and week 12, something like that. I remember crying at my desk, literally in the Golden Diamond Park, just breaking down, like, I cannot do this. So I didn't do a deal for, uh, I think for 12 weeks. So I came in the, I think it was the September, and I didn't do my first sales deal until the December. And it was literally, I think I did it like the week we were breaking up for you know Christmas and going home. And um, I just remember at two points, I was like, this is not for me. And at the time, obviously Mark was 
my manager and he was like, you can do it, you can do it. Um, you know, and giving me like a great pep talk and very encouraging. And yeah, I'm so glad I didn't because I was so close to just saying, do you know what, this is not for me, it's too hard. But like the clients that you deal with, it's not like the UK, it's a very- Less emotion group. involved, you not think, you know, with yeah. particular landlords, it's just, uh, they're less attached to things and it's more business, it's more numbers. But and especially in DLT, yeah. in, in the apartment kind of areas where I was dealing with overseas landlords and yeah, yeah I think just, and a lot of agents at that, a lot of uh, landlords at that time, they weren't doing exclusive listings. So you were fighting with five, yeah. 10 different agents trying to sell a property that, you know, the value was extremely low and the, the commission was also quite low. So how many agents were in the town you worked from back home? If it's a town, probably 20 max, maybe um, a little bit more than that? Probably not even that, to yeah. be honest. Agency is probably like two or three competitors, maybe yeah. five or six in total. Yeah. And then agents, God, it was a long time ago, but maybe 10, 15. So a typical town, yeah, there's probably a town in there. It's probably 15, 20 agents maximum in a typical town. In Dubai, there are thousands of real estate companies and that's grown certainly in the last um, the last 12 months, two years. So when Karine talked about how competitive this place is and all oh, you can't sleep, you, know, you sleep, you lose. Yeah. Um, it really is like that, isn't it? Because there's so many people that are interested in this industry and this certainly is part of the world at the minute. Yeah. So when I was, um, when we went to the Bayou and Divisor Awards a few weeks ago, I was looking at how many registered brokers there were um, when I won the award. And I think it was just over 17,000 registered brokers. Madness. So yeah, like obviously I work predominantly in Victory Heights and the villa community. So within Victory Heights, for example, there's probably let's say 30 to 40 brokers that cover the area, maybe, you know, three, four kind of more senior brokers. But yeah, I mean, you're up against a lot of people in such a small area. I mean, yeah. where I worked in the town in the UK, it, you had the housing estate and then you had all of the villages around. But I mean, you're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of villas. Whereas here, I think I've got 1,200 in the area that I specialize in. Yeah. And then all those brokers trying to cover the same properties. It's, yeah, it's very challenging. Can't believe you stole my thunder. Oh. I don't, on my point is they talk one? about the Bayou <laughs> Award. So. <Sorry. laughs> I mean, also and also of the year, we've we've I've honestly forgot how many awards we've won, and most recently the business um, won best enterprise real estate agency, meaning the the best biggest agency in all of Dubai. And it's something we won also last year with Bay.com also and Divisor, which is the biggest property pool I or, or one of. One of the things I really get a kick out of these days is seeing my team members. Yeah. Really shine because it is about them. It's not about the business anymore. It's about the people that work on work every single day and last a couple of weeks ago you were awarded the best real estate agent in all of Dubai by the biggest property pools. Can I just say one thing? I'm not surprised. Because I've worked for such a long time now and, and how impressed I am with, with, with you, how determined, how persistent you are, how strong you are, how professional you are and how much care you put into the job, not just with a client, but into our processes and our system. So I'm not surprised, but how did it make you feel? Because did you expect it? Did you have a feeling? Do you know what? There was tough competition. I did think like, oh, there's a couple of really, you know, well-respected agents in that category. Um, and then they called out third place. And then I was like, oh, okay. It could be me. It could be maybe someone else. Then they called that person in second. And then, yeah, I mean, I started like getting my dress ready. I was like, I think this actually might be me. Cause I, I genuinely believe in myself yeah. and I'm not saying that I'm the best agent in Dubai, but I do believe that I am a very good agent. Like I really believe that, um, I go above and beyond and yeah, I was like, I think this could be me. Did I didn't want to be disappointed, but I was like silently getting ready to walk up. Were there like goosebumps or what? How did you feel when you walked up? You, you, what, well, I was crying. Do you not remember? Did, did you cry? Oh, I was poor like, and I didn't go. Oh, you didn't go? Yeah, I see, yeah. It was ugly crying. So I think um, Paul was recording or someone was recording. And I remember like putting my head in my hands because I was just like absolutely blubbering. Um, yeah, so I went up on stage and um, the 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 chairman was like are you okay and i was like no <laughs> like absolutely crying like my 
uh, hair was all stuck to my forehead. Oh, it was, it was, the photos were awful. Um, and then I got off stage and I was like, right, I need to call my partner and my mum and dad. Cause my mum and dad were in the UK, uh, in Dubai at the time. And they were waiting at home. So like to see obviously if oh. I'd won. And then the woman was like, no, you need to come for an interview. And then just whisked me off. So I couldn't even tell anyone, but yeah, I just basically cried the whole time. Even on the interview with, um, De Bizzle, I think it was in Bayou. They did like a couple, they asked a couple of questions. You can see me wiping the tears away. So yeah, it was a shock. Like, I mean, it's it's such a huge achievement to win that award out of. Did you celebrate? Did you really... um, I may have. Yeah. They yeah. had a small celebration. Well, it's well, it was truly well deserved. And I, I just feel like it's been a real, I don't want to say ice on the cake, because that means it's the end, but like a, a well-deserved for 10 years. You've kind of yeah. really put the hard yards in to, to get to that award and be recognised. So yeah. amazing. And I, I guess, what what do people need to do to aspire to get to the level you've got to? Because you've been recognised as the best in the industry by the biggest portals. You make a lot of money. You are very well respected in your area. You yeah. are a starting to become a bit of a tycoon with property investment. <laughs> what, do, <laughs> what do people need to do to get to where you where you uh, where you are today? So a couple of things. Obviously this the usual things, the hard work, dedication, perseverance, um, you know, that's part and parcel of being successful anyway. Um, I think finding like your niche and and becoming an absolute expert in your area for example um finding a company that you work well with because you see so many people just hop from one business to another like a company might offer more commission so then they're jumping to this next opportunity but it's not really working out so i think just and and also like getting support around you so making sure you've got all the tools around you to kind of support your career yeah um like here you know like you said earlier if my client wants a mortgage, I'm able to refer it to a mortgage advisor here. If we need property management, um, anything, you know, it's, it's all covered. And I think it's really important just to make sure that you work for a really good company that supports you. Um, and you love and you love what you do. You have to just be passionate and put everything into it. Like for me, it's not a part time job. I think it's very challenging to do this job, um, you know, and expect to six seven o'clock you can kind of turn your phone off and then deal with everything in the morning yeah. i think you've got to be you've got to be all in to make this this successful that is a mentality that's very normal outside this country that, that when you get when you finish work your work is finished yeah and i think here yeah, not that we expect it as a, as a business but clients expect it yeah <laughs> clients expect you to answer your phone at any time you know i'm getting cold calls to different properties at nine ten o'clock <laughs> at night still at age yeah. still working so um yeah so What's next for you? Because you've had an amazing 10 years. And I will say in this, just to add really to our last point, you can make a lot of money in this job, right? If you work hard and you, if you stay the test of time, you do the basics and you listen to your company. But I, I always say that true wealth or comes with what you do with the money you make outside of work. Yeah. Outside of work. So you, yeah. I'm sure you don't want to tell the world everything, but you've got a few properties now in Dubai and yeah. you're looking to grow that portfolio. Yeah. Do you think enough people realise that, that, you know, the the, the expensive t-shirts, the handbags, all the stuff that you kind of want when you first start making money, mm -hmm. none of that really matters the later on down your career. And actually making investments is probably really important to ensure that you're able to retire or not solely rely on yeah. your job. So this this is like a, a daily... Uh discussion between me and my partner because I still love the handbags <laughs> but I obviously love investing as well so it's just finding a balance yeah so for me I think with um with the promotion to associate director as well and being able to have more flexibility I've kind of I've realized that when you are at work you work you know you put everything into it and then you enjoy your free time you enjoy your time with your family etc yeah. and with the the money that you're earning you have to be a lot more wise yeah. because the amount of brunches and going out and things you do in your first like two three years you know it, it god the amount of money i look back now and think god what a I had a great time but what a waste of money yeah um, and imagine if i'd left it imagine if i'd given up real estate and just gone home i would have had nothing um 
I started investing in property here, I think three years ago. Um, and then, yeah, I have a couple of rental properties as well. So I think it's, you've got to find that balance because yeah. for me, I still love nice holidays and yeah. expensive things and nice handbags, yeah. but you've got to have a balance and you've got to think about the future as well. Um, I do live for the moment in some aspects, but then I do think about the future as well. And that's what this job enables you to do. If you're here long enough and you become successful, then I think, yeah, it's an amazing place to have those opportunities. I do say, it depends what age you do this job, but I do say like work in your 20s and 30s so you don't have to work yeah. in your 40s and 50s. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, for flight you sound point, now you've got the flexibility, you may not work as hard as you did when you first started. And you probably do, but you work differently maybe. But yeah, you work smarter. Yeah. So um, don't get me wrong, you know, I go into the office and, you know, we all have a joke and we all get on really well, but then we all work really hard. I'm really lucky to be in an office with seven other kind of really experienced brokers. So we all work hard and we know when to have a joke and when someone is busy trying to close a deal, for example. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think just, you've got to find that balance. Yep. And um, yeah, now as an associate director, I think we're just, yeah, it gives you more flexibility to be able to do that. So what's next? Because you're an amazing 10 years, property investor, like what, what, what where'd you go? Um, I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously continuing the, um, the investments yep. is really important. So I want to be able to buy another couple of properties, renovate them. Yeah. Might start maybe trying to sell and then buy more. Cause at the moment, obviously, uh, myself and my partner have bought and then we've kept them as rental properties. Yeah. So I feel like maybe now I'd like to get my teeth into maybe a couple of apartments and then if the market's great, then obviously sell them. Do you um, think there's a, a market for buying, improving and selling? 100%. I do. Yeah, 100%. Particularly areas where they're aging. So for example, where you yeah. live, how, how long has Victory Heights been built now? 10 years more now? Um, Victory Heights now, the oldest property is like 13, 14 years. So they're starting to age. Do you know what, the, the houses themselves are fantastic, but inside the yes. materials that the developer use in the style, yeah. it's like Mediterranean, Spanish-y, kind of terracotta. So yeah, a lot of people now just want to rip them out and, and renovate them. And you feel people pay a lot more for something that's improved? 100%. Yeah. yeah. They don't want the hassle, I don't want the hassle. I want to go in, it's all done, it's all ready. See, I like the hassle. Oh, <laughs> I like the renovation and I, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, something so one thing when i when i'm showing people houses like that's something that i always touch on because i've renovated properties myself like i've always got these amazing ideas and people feel really lost in these houses like oh don't like the kitchen don't like the bathrooms and i'm there just talking about all these changes you can make which i think is good you know it, it gives people a different side to a viewing as well but yeah definitely like we've seen a huge increase in prices if a property is renovated, people can just literally move from overseas, bring suitcases and the house is ready to go. So before we talk about the Dubai property news and we wrap things up here on Taking Care of Business, give me some quick uh, quick roundup on prices in your area, what's happening at the moment. So, you know, you've got your, your townhouses, you've got your uh, your different style villas. Realistically, what you can get, what can you get for, at the moment for, yeah. for different properties? So um, we've got, seven different types of villa in Victory Heights. So uh, ranging from townhouses, so the townhouses are four bedrooms, um, two different types. So let's say an average price is probably three to 3.5 million okay. for a townhouse. Um, and then you've got independent villas, four, five beds, small five beds, large five beds. Um, I'd say entry at the moment is five million. Really? So yeah, for an independent villa, entry would be five. Um, obviously going up in size, then six million, seven million, your huge five beds um, with full golf course views. Realistically now I'd say eight million. I mean, they can go all the way up to 11, 12 million if they're renovated. How does that compare to areas close by your, the price in Victory Heights? Um, I still think Victory Heights is very well priced. Um, but again, I think the interior is a, a are aging and are slightly older. Yeah. So they need to be priced slightly lower. For example, Jamiro Golf Estates is next door. It's a lot more prestigious in terms of community. You've got lots of different uh, styles of villa and some of them are super modern. Yeah. So the prices there, of course, are a lot more expensive. 
Um, but I think it's very well priced. Like if you can get a five bed detached with a big plot for kind of six million upgrade for 500,000, you've got a great family home. They are very, and actually probably go, go as far as saying one of the best and most evenly laid out properties. Yes. In great most layout. villa, yeah. villa communities in Dubai. Yeah. So some, some property news before we go. So the Seal Hotel, and hopefully, we're going to see a picture of behind me, uh, just just show what it show what it is. Um, the largest complex hotel complex in the world is handing over. It's due to open next year in 2024. Nice. So that's a little booking yeah. listing to go to take your parents and whatnot next year. Yeah, exactly. That will be going on my Instagram. We'll be uh, promoting that. Oh yes. Of fan sales. <laughs> so that's that's happening next year, which will be very very interesting. Dubai property market continues to. Uh, to have a, an amazing week. So last year, last week, 2.87 billion of property deal, deals last Tuesday was done, which is incredible, um, absolutely amazing. And then lastly, I can tell you from experience, UAE golden visas. So last, well, the last, certainly the last 12 months, they've introduced a golden visa. So you're allowed to have a 10 year visa. They have seen demand for these skyrocket. And there's actually been a change just recently where they're now allowing any professional with a salary of 30,000 dirhams that's deemed a professional to be able to apply for a UAE golden visa. So I had mine done about a month ago. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so no more blood tests for 12 years, for 10 years, which I'm delighted about. Um, but the process for me was quite straightforward. However, in these queue systems, it was mad. Yeah. The amount of people queuing up and waiting, it's just, yeah. just crazy. So hopefully you'll be getting yours soon. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining us thank and taking care of business this Thanks week. Thanks for the invite. And we will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.